Good evening. One man is dead after a collision on Highway 4 just north of North Battleford. The incident happened shortly after 1.30 this afternoon. It involved a car and a propane truck. The 85-year-old driver of the car was pronounced dead on scene. Meanwhile, Highway 29 from Wilkie to North Battleford is not recommended to drive due to bad driving conditions. Well, a new charity walk will make its debut in the border city this weekend. Called the coldest night of the year, money raised will go to the local homeless shelter. Organizers are counting on the walk to help continue funding the local men's shelter. Running a shelter is not cheap and the funding from the government, they're always looking for us to be more self-sufficient. And it gave us the opportunity to come up with $25,000 and we're halfway there. Lloyd Minster joins 35 cities and 800 teams participating across the country. The walk is meant to put volunteers in the shoes of the homeless for one cold night. Today does give a good example of what it's like to be homeless. If you are minus 22 and outside, it's pretty chilly all day. Dixon hopes this becomes an annual event in the city. You can still register your team online at the Coldest Night website. The walk will kick off at 5 p.m. Saturday at Bud Miller Park. Well, dozens of women in and around the border city were using one another as a source of ideas and inspiration today. The second annual Inspiring Women Conference was held at the Stockade. The goal is to find a balance between personal and professional development. Equalizers and um, an equalizer is a self body weight training system. This is the second year Grace de Oliveira has attended the Inspiring Women Conference. De Oliveira is the owner of Energy for Life, a fitness center here in Lloydminster. Whether it be personal inspiration, that's what we're about. So we figured we should be here. If we're trying to meet people that want to be inspired, then we're going to try to be here to inspire them. De Oliveira knows firsthand the hardships of starting up a business from scratch. Now she is celebrating a decade of owning the gym. I just knew that this was what I wanted to do and that I, want, I had a service that I needed to offer and I just went ahead and tried it. So it's nice that they have these opportunities today when I didn't have them when I started. Nearly 200 women filled the stockade to hear from several speakers, including around the region host Caleb Buchanan, who was the MC. A keynote speaker from Calgary as well as four local breakout speakers entertained the crowd. Organizers of the event say this is a great way to get other women inspired. It doesn't matter if you're in business, if you're at home with the kids, if you're on the farm and you're near Lloydminster and you want to come, it's for everybody. There is a business aspect and there is a personal aspect, so we call it a personal and professional development day. Corey Van Meter attended the event with co-workers. She works for Paradise Hill Farm Supply, a field that isn't necessarily dominated by women. Just that ability that women can First do nowadays foremost, is great. You you know, there's so many hidden talents out there. I, um, so. And so it's pretty good for Generally, like my home Yes, that's right, for support like role. And, and it's that message that organizers and those in attendance want to pass along. And when we tell our stories, complete with our successes and some of our struggles, it kind of helps us to support one another and, and feel inspired by each other and go out and do a little bit more tomorrow. Yeah, this is a really good opportunity for a lot of ladies and for a lot of people just in general just to um, get inspired and have faith in themselves. As the border city's economy continues to grow, Lloydminster becomes a destination for businesses, individuals and families to thrive in. Now, the Lloydminster Economic Development Corporation launched a unique book yesterday to use as a tool to entice more people to come live in our city. Anna Stanislaw reports. The limited edition photo book released by the LEDC has only 1,000 copies available. It's a collaboration between local photographers and organizations showcasing Lloyd Minster in a whole new light. Ward Reed says it took a while to get the finished product, but is happy with the result. And so we hope that this will simply change some views and pique some interest so that the one little piece where we, we know our web pages that will get people then looking to the web pages and it will balloon from there. This uh, book displays that. It's uh, top quality photography, top quality uh, print, and uh, it just paints the picture of uh, how bright the future is for our city in Lloydminster. If you're wondering why there are only 1,000 copies made. We wanted something that had a clear and definite value that people would keep, wouldn't toss away, wouldn't discard, would reuse and keep in a prominent location. It's a marketing tool, certainly very attractive, uh, you know, shows you know, uh, many different facets of uh, the city of Lloydminster, 
but there's also product there because it demonstrates that there's something for you to see and do and get involved with. So. The photo book will be targeting influential leaders and other individuals throughout Canada and the world. City officials, LEDC partners and the library are just some of the few that will have copies of the book. Lloydminster really is not just a, a community of, uh, of ag and oil, that there's a lot of opportunity across the board for individuals, for families, for business and so on. The book will be available to the public to purchase in the next two months. Anna Stanislaw, UCAP News. From New Orleans to the border city, hundreds of people came out to support the Friends of the Performing Arts 16th Annual Mardi Gras celebration over the weekend. Once again, here's Anna Stanislaw. Singers, musicians and more were given the chance to show off their talent at the sold out Mardi Gras event. All of the bands here, the dancers, performers, they're all local artists. So it's a great venue for them to perform to a, on a big stage with the great sound and lights and lots of audience members. FOPA is a non-profit fundraising group composed fully of volunteers. And Cindy Gratton says all funds raised will go to performing arts in the community. We've donated to music festival, um, we have post-secondary scholarships, we have a dance scholarship, and then a lot of the elementary, junior high and high schools, we fund um, instruments for the band program, music, some kids to go on their band trips, kind of wherever the need is. FOPA donated over $13,000 from last year's Mardi Gras and they're expecting to exceed it this year. Music programs at schools like Lloydminster Comprehensive High are just one of the places that benefit from these donations. Last year, for example, with the money that FOPA donated to the high school program, we were able to buy a whole bunch of uh, guitars and basses and amps uh, to get us going with our garage band program. And so we were really thankful for that. FOPA has a partnership with LPSD, the public school division, um, where we help facilitate music lessons, private music lessons in the schools during school time. So in, in that partnership, we're able to fund private lessons for students that otherwise wouldn't be able to afford them. Jones says he's glad the community cares about the arts and culture in the city. They represent the support that Lloydminster and the area have for the arts and uh, to see the outpouring of support that we get through FOPA as a conduit is just tremendous. <laughs> Stanislaw, UCAP News.